Hello, we are back, and as promised, today we're going to dive into databases and collections, maybe even documents for just a little bit, and do a high overview of getting you started with databases. If you remember last time we signed up with GitHub, we logged in, we created our project called Hello Pluto, and this is where we're at. So now take a look at the dashboard. As you can see, we have all of these beautiful features that we hummed over last time, but this time we're going to click on databases. Now, databases could be one of the most important or if not the most important part of AppWrite, because not only does AppWrite offer databases as a service, endpoint, API, even part of the SDK, but it also uses it. So it's very important to us as much as it is to anyone else. Now, if we dive right in here, the first thing we're going to see is where we would list our databases. Now, AppWrite, we do this one thing that's really awesome. We put the documentation right where you can get to it right away. And this will link you directly over to the documentation at AppWrite.io. Now take a look here. You can go to your usage. This will show you some stats about how it's used, how it's accessed, all the fun things. But you know what? We don't have any databases yet. So there really is no usage. So let's go over here and create a database. And we're going to call this database planet because you know what? Pluto is a planet. Now we are going to leave this blank and allow AppWrite to generate us a very unique identifier that we will use to reference our database planet throughout our applications. Here we go. We created our database and now it has dropped us directly into our collections view. There's our unique identifier that we generated. Here's our usage stats and our settings that allows us to rename it as well as delete it. But remember when you delete it, it's gone. So now in collections, again, we do this nice thing. There's the documentation that will jump you out over to appright.io documentation and it'll get you started, get you working with and give you even more in-depth information about collections or anything that we link to. So a collection is basically a definition or defined schema that tells us what kind of data that we can store and how that data is going to be structured. In this case, we could create very quite a few attributes uh, that would define like a, a name of a person or an email address, a URL, an IP address, a date of birth, anything that you need to store in your application. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a collection and we're going to call it citizens. This is going to be my registry for Pluto and all the citizens who live there. This time I'm going to show you what it's like to give it a name that I did choose and hit create. Now, this is really cool. We've been dropped directly into our collections view, our, our collection named citizens. Boom. There's the ID right here. Citizens. I can click to copy and down here, it's going to give you a list of documents. Oh, look, also documentation. So what we are looking at right now, would be a list of documents if we had any stored, but we have no attributes and nothing else set up. So let's add an attribute really quickly. We're going to do a string. We're going to call this first name and its size is going to be 100 characters long. It's going to be required. And we're going to hit create. We're going to create another attribute called string and we're going to call this, guess what it is? Last name size 100. If you have a, a last name or a name longer than 100 characters, maybe we should have a different conversation. So now we're going to jump in here. You got first name, last name. Both of those are required. We'll create census. Let's call this a census. We're going to go to a date time. We're going to call this birthday. We're going to make this required as well. Default value is cool. Create. There we go. So we have created three attributes that are required in order to save data to our citizens collection. Now we want to be able to search on these or to make things look up whenever we search for things or whenever we query for information, we want to be able to make that a little bit faster by using indexes. So we're going to call this first name, last name, index. We're going to say we're going to be a key type. That's cool. We're going to call this on first name and then we're going to add an attribute called last name. We're going to hit create. Oops. Oh, look, I forgot a field. What field's required? And let's just do it on first name to start. Boom. There we go. So now we created an index on the first name. That index will allow our database to be super smart about how it handles any kind of lookup or any searches or anything that has to do with the first name that is stored. We can add more attributes for uniqueness, such as first name and last name, making sure that they're unique together and things of that nature. Again, more information can be found at appright.io. Now that we've created these indexes, we also have where you can see all the index, all of this here. These are events. These are what are fired every time I interact with a collection or a document in the collection or a database. And this is very handy for whenever you're doing something like real time. So if a user in a chat app was to write a message and hit enter and send that message and would be stored as a document inside of a chat collection, 
then it would fire off an event called document create. And then that document create is broadcasted out to everybody who is connected to that chat app and listening, and it will update their screens accordingly. So now we're going to go over to usage. This will tell you how many documents are stored, how much is interacted and so on and so forth. Settings is a little bit more. I can enable, I can turn off the citizens uh, collection. I can turn it back on again. I can rename it. I can add document, select the string attribute as a display name for your document. The selected names will be used as short forms to identify documents. So a kind of a shortcut to data that you want to be seeing right away. We also have permissions. This will give who has the ability to see this. I can go to any, I go to all guests and I can say all guests can read it. I can add another role called select users. And there's a list of users that would be populated here that I could select very specific people to interact with this collection. Right now, let's do add a role of all users. For some reason, we'll say all users have the ability to create an update and read, but not delete. We're going to click the update button and our permissions were updated. Now, if you want to look down here, we have document security that allows a little more protection. You can also look, uh, you can have document level protection. So it says this document right here, if a document pops up, this one can only have access by these people and these things. So you get a little bit more granular with the security and the protection of that collection or that row or document inside of the collection. Now we have delete collection right here. Again, that's like RM minus RF delete collection. So once it's deleted, it is irreversible. It is gone. So long and farewell. Now let's go back to our database. That is a quick overview. That is a breeze through of databases. So stay tuned for more. Next up, we'll be looking at all functions and storage. Uh, we'll see you then. If you want to follow along, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then use the little bell if you'd like to be notified when we post new videos. Thanks again for all your time. We'll see you next time.